Oh man, here we go, man. We're back. I'm in Ace Town. I had to pull up on my guy, BFB the Pac Man. How you doing, brother? You good? Man, I'm happy. I'm still happy. Still me. Jealous. What's the cup in your hand? You sipping now? Man, this that. It give me that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It calm you down. Yeah. It make me feel like on top of the world. Mm. This has been giving me motivation lately. Mm. Yeah. Make you more creative and shit. Yeah. So like, what sure. what's your mental state like? Cause I I remember speaking to you and you know you you voiced to me that it was ups and downs, music industry crazy, friends crazy, IRS this. Yeah. Like, let's talk yeah. about it. Uh, man, it's just from from being in a post office to like now. Man, I never knew the music business was like this. You know what I mean? Like, and I never knew, like, having success or having a, some money or having fame was going to change the people around you. It was just like a battle of everything. <laughs> dealing with friends, dealing with family, dealing with people in the industry. It was just like nothing was how I thought it was going to be, like. Everything like, man, it's just Meek Mill songs. Now, when I listen back to old Meek Mill songs, the reason why Meek is so powerful, and this is what I be saying about the internet the internet is a whole nother thing. Real niggas feel Meek and know what Meek be talking about, especially if you had one of those three things fame, money, success. His songs, his music make a lot more sense now. Cause making it out the trenches, man, it's like going from that to that. It's like those three things that I spoke about. You gonna see and feel what he's saying, like dealing with family, dealing with friends, dealing with the success, the peers. Like, like everything is gonna change. The minute you make it, or the minute you reach success, it's like everybody change. Mm. Not you, they change. Man. So it's like, man, that, and then, <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, like, because, you know, I, I got a little success, and it's like, people, they will call you knowing that you're not going to say no, or you can't say no, because they know you got it. Man, man you got to have, if you a giver, you got to have limits, because the takers never do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's a bar. That's a, I really heard that on Fab. Fab, that's a fab bar for sure. But it's the truth though. You know what I'm saying? You most definitely gotta have a limit, man. Cause they ain't they gonna they gonna take a minute. Was you happier working at the post office? It seemed like you were. Yeah. You used to make videos and So the thing was, I'm not depressed or sad. We ain't going that 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 vibe. The thing was, man. I can joke, I can laugh, I cannot talk to a family member, not talk to a friend. And it'll just be like, oh man, I can call him, he living his life, I can call him, he gonna answer the phone. Now it's like, yeah, I talked to you, bro, I called you, bro, you ain't answer the phone. You ain't comment back when I comment on your post. Keeping score. Bro, you ain't. You Keeping ain't. score. That's what people do when you get somebody that keeps score. Right. Uh, bro, I talk. You know, it's crazy. I, I talked to the same people before I was saying this word. Now, like, I've talked to the same five people. i talked to five people mm. consistently. When I was working at the post office, when I moved to Houston, when my, me, my pops, and my mom was driving one car, mm. and we all worked 30, 40 minutes away from each other. We had to rotate. Talk to five people. Now it's just like everybody want to call, everybody want to ask for favors, everybody want to, you know what I'm saying? But I still deal with it and I still say yes until I say no. Mm. So yeah, and keeping score, that's a good one. Keeping score, because it's like when I first started getting money was like 2000, like late 16. Um, that's when I was like, damn, like I looked at my PayPal and seen 100,000. And I still was super frugal because 
I didn't. I thought I got lucky. When I got my first 100000 I thought I got lucky. So I was super frugal because I was like, I don't ever want to go broke. I want to always keep this 100000 So then after a while, um, you know, I started getting more and more money. But then that's when people start, when people notice you're getting money or like when I bought a car. Um, people start keeping tabs of everything. Like, bro, I called you. Um, or... Even with the Say Cheese posts, like people keep score with shit that I don't do, you know? Yeah. And that's just what comes with success. And I feel like, and I feel like you're not there. I feel like, and I feel like you're not there. So, so I got this thing, right? What I say is, man, I tell all my homies, you can't take none of this personal. Mm. Like, it's even times that I, like, it's even times, and this is just real talk. Everybody knows Sean, my brother. It's days where I'd be like, bro, I need you to post this. He's like, bro, send it. I got you. And never post it. So I would pay him. I don't mm. take it personal. Because you know why? I wasn't shooting with this nigga in the gym. Mm. That nigga don't owe me nothing. He don't owe me nothing. And niggas would be like, oh, bro, but he said that he could have said, bro, he don't owe you nothing. Just pay yeah. him the, just pay him the six, seven hundred, whatever it costs. Just pay him a thousand, whatever it costs. Just pay him. But I do want to say this on camera, too. What? I was talking to my homie, and he was upset that another platform wasn't responding to him. And I said, bro, don't get mad because... No, 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 not even that. We get overwhelmed. It's like, hold on, wait, let me explain myself. I'll have three homie. I have. I'll have three of my homies hit me up that are artists that I never take money from. It's the Yellow Beezies, the Sauce Walkers, the Go Yayos, the um, BFB, the Pac Man. Love Yayo. Yeah, that's my guy. You love Yayo. I, I love Sauce too. I see you outside. <laughs> I said I hear Ronnie because you know we, me and Hood <laughs> fan, little Ronnie, we locked in like we lock locked in. Lock heavy locked in with the four word for niggas. And when I see you outside late, I said, Y'all got shot outside? <laughs> oh, he love yeah. He really love him, bro. That nigga don't come outside. Man, that nigga ain't coming outside. If his girl having a wedding, that nigga not coming outside, man. For real. Besides, bro, my bad, I don't mean to interrupt you. But yeah. But no, nah, I mean, I, a lot of people said that when they signed a music video, and I didn't want to be in it. But yeah. uh, to my point, where I, I'll tell somebody I'm going to do something and I don't do it, it's not on purpose. It's because we we as humans, we get overwhelmed. Like, for example, I'll have four labels hit me up in one so day. So what, bro? No, no, no. I just want to explain myself. Oh, okay. I just want to explain bro, myself. You don't got um, but it's just like us as humans and say cheese really made me have like anxiety. Like even sometimes when I'm at like the basketball games, watch you mm. play, mm. like I get social anxiety. Mm. Like say cheese has really caused that mm. because so many people at one time, everybody wants some, either if they're paying or not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes I just have to step back and just regroup. Cause bro, you don't understand. Everybody's thinking like, you and you, it, you're smart because you hit me in the mornings, right when I wake up, right before I get busy. Mm. And a lot of people, this picture and waking up and it's 18 text messages. You get what I'm saying? Of yo, money or not, I just fall back sometimes and it rub people the wrong way. So, and there's been times where I did tell you I was gonna do something I didn't, but it was just one of them days. But I don't listen. This is what I tell niggas that nigga don't owe you nothing, bro. You don't owe me nothing. You know who you owe, bro? It's two people who you owe in this world. And one of them you don't really owe. They did their part. It's your mama and your kids. That's it. Your ki- your parents, your daddy, your mama, and your kids. And you don't really owe them. They did their part. You know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying? I don't take none of this person. You're going to be the only nigga take. So what I'm saying, I watched a lot of niggas. Crap on you. I'm going to say crap because I ain't doing no cussing in this interview. I watched a lot of Why niggas. Why you not cussing in this interview? My pops up over there. I'm a oh. respectful guy. So I watched a lot of people F over you, S-H-I-T on you, when they don't get their way. That ain't the way to do it. Mm. Once you cancel yourself, like, like I tell niggas, 
once you take it personal, you're going to be the only nigga taking it personal because it's going to backfire on you. Anybody know this nigga, bro? Once you threw with him, you threw with him, bro. He can live without you. He ain't about to answer the phone. That nigga keep his number the same. He not about to answer the phone. <laughs> he not about to answer no text. Bro, this niggas that hit me, like, niggas that was tied in with this nigga before I was even around, like, hey, bro, you ain't shine for me. And it's like, I would try. I would talk. But, bro, this nigga, he not going, bro. Once you mess over him, bro, he ain't no more messing with you. And I ain't saying that's not the reason to keep your feelings in check. It's just, nigga, I wasn't shooting with you in the gym. You don't owe me nothing. So I just pay. So that ain't nothing for you to clear up, my nigga. I don't care if you got 500 text messages, bro. That's your life. That show you got whatever. You got kids, whatever. A girl. You running the four businesses. You doing real estate. You doing teams. You doing, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody know what you going through on the. So I would just pay. I don't take it. Nigga, I hit Quay. Quay. She already know. I hit her. Man, look, man. Sean doing something in here, man. I'm about to see this post. She, All right, I got you. All right, and it's done. You still my brother. I still love you. But one thing I did take personally, you ain't invite me to the baby shower. We can cut this out because I don't know if he, I don't know if he announced that check. I took that personal. Now that's something I did take personal because I'm gonna tell you why I took it personal. I love this shit, bro. Don't matter what, what you did for me. Am I? So let me tell y'all, right? Let me tell y'all the reason why I love this nigga so much, no matter what he do. If he need a kidney, I give it to him, right? For one, I never said this in no interview, but I'm going to say it today because four years later, I'm going to say it. Bro, I had $2,000 to my name working at the post office. I had saved up. I was trying to get the feature from Sada. You got to think about it. $2,000, bro. $2,000. $2,000. The cameras. $2,000. Nah, hit him, man. Let me get a feature. Two thousand dollars ain't no money, bro. You can't even pay rent with that. The nigga say, "Man, I don't know, cause it's two thousand dollars. Ain't nobody about to do no feature for two thousand dollars." You know what I'm saying? So I have been hounding this out of for weeks trying to get it done. Mm -hmm. That nigga like, man, Sean Cotter said he gonna post it, man. I got you. Just because this nigga said he gonna post it, he had me. So I always love and respect John Cotton and, and, and Sada, period, no matter what. No matter what them niggas do, them my niggas to the end of the world, no matter what. Even if they say Pac-Man, I ain't fucking with him. Still love them niggas. So look, that's one. Two, I never would have learned the things I know. Didn't nobody teach me about buying no house. I got all this money. When I first got famous, bro, the labels cut the check. The banks wouldn't give me no loans. They was on some racist stuff. He introduced me to this wonderful lady that stressed both of us out. You know what I'm saying? And she got me approved for a crib. You get what I'm saying? Through this nigga. He introduced me to her. Could nobody help me when nobody helped me? The late, the, the, the bank seen all this money in the bank account. They still was like, no, nah, we need to see income. Right? Three. Bro, the lunch crew company, I'm part of that. Tag is because of this nigga. <laughs> Me and him chilling with some bad chicks. Some chicks that ain't even from Houston. And they was just so proper, right? You can actually hear this nigga in the background. Like, what? What's that? Like, that's him in the background. He like, you know what I'm saying? Because the one of the chicks was like, please don't get that. Please don't say that. And the girl that said it was laughing. And he like, what? Hmm. And she was like, the lunch true company. I'm part of that. Hmm. And you can hear this nigga opening up the pop. You feel me? Like, it's so many ways I'm connected to dog. And then it's like, well, my career, he was just rooting for a nigga like, like me posting, me posting, me doing wild stuff, me just, you know what I'm saying? Like when I when I, I did one of the features on my tape and a nigga was like, 
bro, you did a deal with him? Man, you was on Say Cheese for like two years straight. I said, no, nah, man, we just had that. He just wanted to see a nigga win. He ain't getting none, no money from a deal or none of that. The nigga ain't getting no money. That's what I'm saying. Like, that type of, you can't pay for that. You can't, you can't pay for that. Usually niggas will show love like that if they getting some off, off of it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like every different like, I'll be a fool if I say, man, F him. He ain't post my stuff. F him. Man. That nigga ain't invite me to his baby shower. But if I come from the bottom, bro. I come from the mud. So, and I'm a hustler, bro. Like, I never had no big homie to just show me or give me any bowls or any bricks or any, you know what I'm saying? The only big homie I ever had was him in a corner. And that's because he's my parent. But it's like, he couldn't really do nothing illegal with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because he coming from a parent perspective. So when a nigga come get you rich, it's like, bro, you know what, bro? You like my brother, bro. And they don't even, it ain't even, and it ain't even nothing more, nothing less. You feel me? Like, you finally having your first seed. My nigga, let me come with a gift. You know what I'm saying? For your for your child, like, this is something that you stuck with for life. Ain't nobody gonna love you like the... Even when the mama stop loving you and go get another man, or if y'all don't work out, your kid's still gonna love you, bro. That's something that we should celebrate as men together. You know what I'm saying? Because I love my kids to death. I was gonna bring them, but it's kind of late. My first interview, I had my kids in it. I ride or die with them kids. And you a nigga just like me, I feel. We gonna ride or die with them kids. So I'm like, man, my nigga having his first kid, bro. This nigga shine like my big brother. We don't talk like that, but he forever my big brother. He sharing his, he having a kid. He told me he having this kid. Man, I wanna come to the baby shower and send him a gift. Nigga ain't let me send him a gift. Nah. Nigga ain't send me no picture. Nigga ain't do nothing like. Nah. The, you know what I'm saying? The, the, I felt a way about that for nah, sure. Now that's one I did feel the, a way about. The baby shower was way in Corpus. And uh Nigga, we would have came down there with you I know, didn't whatever. Think you, I didn't think you would have Corpus is like down south, down south. So Corpus Christi, right? Yeah, yeah by the by the by the by the uh lake, by the uh ocean, right? Yeah. Bro, we so gotta, I just assumed it wasn't because I was like trying to keep it a secret or no. I don't even think it's um, that. I just think you didn't think about me. Yeah, I, I, I just assumed that you yeah. probably had something going on. Yeah, like, and that's what I'm saying, bro. We from the, I'm a, we givers, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody give to us, it's like, nigga, you in my heart forever because you got to think, bro. So many people took, 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 took. So when somebody actually give and be genuine with it, it's like, nigga, you in my heart forever. Like, you my dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I took it personal because it's like, nigga, let me get to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the only reason why I took it personal, but I wasn't even tripping. I was kind of sad. Uh, damn, this is an emotional interview. I went my eyes. I was kind of sad that 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 uh, because I'm building this distribution company and I have an amazing roster and I always wanted to do business with you uh, as a partnership. And I'm like, damn, he turned this tape into somebody. When I've been trying to, I've been trying to give him at least fifty thousand for a tape. I've been wanting to do seven. I've been trying to offer this dude money to do a tape. And it's Period. like, I feel like, wait. You you went six seven minutes, but we ain't did, but we ain't did. I did it on tour court. You're not in, you bro. You let. Can I talk? Look. I just feel like me being black and young. <laughs> I feel like you don't trust me, bro, because I'm no. I, I feel like it's one of the things to where you like, what, oh, like shit. <laughs> bro. Stop, bro. All right, I quit. What I'm speaking? Of. I quit, bro. I quit. I quit. I quit. <laughs> let me be serious, bro. Let me be serious. Let me be serious. Let me be serious. I just feel like the young black guy in the music space doesn't get the respect that the old Jews do. If a Jewish white guy in the suit came and offered you the same thing, I feel like most rappers will go with that guy because he most rappers because not me. black people don't most trust rappers. black people. You're right. You're right though. You're right. They feel like white ice colder. Come on, now. not me. That's a dope line. Who told you that? Charlemagne the God. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't Can watch say, sports or nothing. All I watch is like hip hop music shit. But keep going. Yeah, they feel yeah, like so white ice colder for sure. 
Yeah, they. Yeah, they feel like white ice colder. Yeah, so it's like, I just feel like when I seen you, when I seen you tweet that you turned it in, I'm like, damn, I didn't even get a chance to bid. I didn't even get the chance to say, yo, let me do that. Let me give you this. I didn't even get a chance to negotiate with whatever whoever gave you that. And you don't owe me shit either. Huh. But it's just like, damn. I ain't... We came up together. The blueprint was Say Cheese, BFB the Pac-Man. Why can't we do this shit four years later? We can't. We could. Bro, I ain't, I ain't do no exclusive. Bro, listen. I'm distributing this bitch by myself, bro. I'm distributing it. I ain't signed to no... Bro, a nigga just tried to give me 250 Hmm. I told him. I want to keep all my connections, my music connections, my music plugs, but you don't even want to know what I told him. He tried to give me 250 bro. What's wrong with 250 I told them motherfuckers I want 400 bands. Bro, you got to realize, right? If I show you what I make a month on two, bro, and really I got this from Baby Smooth, right? By the way, I've been hitting you, Baby Smooth. You've been ignoring me, nigga. Baby Smooth, you bro. Me too. Go right. Ahead. Baby Smooth, right? Niggas don't even know this. Baby Smooth is like a lot of when a lot of, when niggas say they independent, bro, they they, they be, empire yeah. independent, orchard independent, foundation media independent, one RPM independent. Uh -huh. Um, they go to these distributions and get a bag. Baby Smooth, that nigga, that nigga. TuneCore, Deetstro Kid, Independent, bro. Just like that nigga, Dreedo Man, uh, what's his name? BLP Culture. Yeah. Four Bats. He ain't independent, though. Not no more? I think he about to get one of the biggest deals, but go ahead. But what I'm saying is them niggas independent. So when you click they Spotify and you see 77 million streams and 50 million... Nigga, that's a uh, nigga. That's a check every month. Them niggas clearing forty bands probably every month. Mm. You feel me on on Distro Kid and TuneCore and CD Baby, whatever the Distro we uploading our stuff. So I'm just like, man, you know what? I seen what Baby Smooth doing. I'm about to do it. And after them two years of me not after I lost my pay because I really lost my pay. That's what really killed my buzz. Everybody like, bro. Why you stop rapping? I mean, niggas ain't like, bro, I was bumping your stuff 220 and 21. I said, you don't know what happened, huh? No, bro, you just fell off the face of the earth. Nigga, I lost the page. And one thing I learned, dog, in the music industry, bro, if you leave for six, seven months, Three you months. do. Three you months. stick a fork in it. Uh -huh. Bro, Glorilla left for two months, three months. They said she fell off. How? You only been gone for 90 days, nigga. And that's what I had to learn. So I and then I got I met some real niggas from the Bay Area. My nigga Paperboy. And uh my nigga Gazi from Empire, he got my page back. Then they took it again. And I met the my niggas from the Bay Area and they got it back. And I just been in the slump. Solomon told me, wait. Um, we're about to get this deal. I went broke. Um, first time me going broke. And that's another thing, financial literacy. That should be the main thing they teach us, not calculus, not uh racist war history that happened, nigga, in the seventeen hundreds. They gotta teach us. How to manage our money. What's broke the, though? Is broke five thousand in the bank? Broke is nigga zero dollars in the bank, nigga. You could have called me, bro. Bro, I ain't calling no nigga. Mm. I take care of my kid. I take care of my family. Bro, I ain't calling no but nigga. But you wasn't super you wasn't. Let me tell you. Okay. Let me tell you. I don't buy jury. Right. My problem is people, food, and experiences. If you with me, bro, you about to eat, drink for free. You know what I'm saying? My family, bro, whatever they need, they can call and ask. I'm always extend. I'm always going broke for my family, but I got to stop that too. You feel me? I'm going to always go overboard for my family. And like, I, if you with me, bro, you with me. You don't need to keep, you feel me? I got this, bro. 
God put this in my pocket. Whatever you need, drink, weed, whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't get high. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Same. But I drink a little bit of this from mm. time to time. But my problem is that. But, bro, when the money came, right, bro, I ain't find nobody to file my taxes until 2021, mm. right? So my deal was a million dollar deal. It was like 600 in pocket, 400 on the back end. After I cut my whole team in, because I ain't no greedy nigga. And you know that when, I, when we was about to do a deal with such such yeah. them, I'm like, bro, y'all got to cut Sean in. We got to cut Sean in. I'm a nigga that's going, everybody on my team got to eat. If I get a check, it's going through like four people before it get to me. Mm. And rappers not like that, man. Definitely. That's why they be falling out with their team and their management because they don't be want to cut nobody in. I ain't tripping, bro. That ain't nothing but a write off to me anyway. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Cut all them niggas in. I don't care if it cut it down. I don't care nigga, if, you, if I get a million dollar check and that one from be cut to 300,000. I ain't going to have to pay no taxes. I'm filing all of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? So, um, man, we ain't find nobody to file my taxes. So, you know, that's penalty, 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 penalty. And then, man, a chick got over, man, she charged me like 10000 to file my taxes. Um, man, I think I had to pay a lot of taxes. And I only had a little bit of cheese. I think I was down to like 300 mm. And that's really light. You know, once we, you know, man, I seen a nigga get a check and he was broke next month. Mm. I was real frugal. I was real like tight because I, I still had a lot of money left over. Yeah. Nigga, three, I still had 300,000 with 600,000. And that's traveling, you feel me, experiences, cars, whatever, rent, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Family, shopping, whatever. To still have half of your money left, you know what I'm saying? Man, that tax return came in, and that mug said some crazy. And, bro, I just paid it all because I don't want no problem with them folks. But you can do payment plans too, though. Me, man, I come from the bottom, bro. You know how we think. We seen uh, Wesley Snipes. We seen all these niggas go to tax and vet tax. Man, pay them, get them. It's just like being late on your rent or having not having all the money for your rent or having all the money for your rent. Nigga, and then, nigga, you gonna go broke paying the rent. You can't pay if your rent a thousand dollars. You can't pay them niggas eight hundred. Man, go pay them all their money. So that's how I'm thinking. Keep them people out your face. Man, keep man, pay them all their money, and that's how I went broke. A lot of niggas go broke. They go broke and can't pay their taxes. Mm. I went broke because I ain't had a right. People around me, I ain't had a right. You know what I'm saying? But now I know. Now I got the right people. I got a business manager. I got, you feel me? Yeah. So what really brought me back was real estate, bro. Mm. Real estate really brought me back. But I don't really want to speak about that too much yet because niggas be hating so hard. Yeah. But really, that's what I've been floating off of, real estate. And, bro, I just took the baby smooth way. Just been on TuneCore, you feel me? Doing Going back to the old formula. Go make a song, get it mixed by A-Red. Shoot a video, oh shot you. Throw it on say cheese consistently dropping. I'm back. I think you may be the only rapper that, that will admit that they went broke. Everybody else so insecure, they care about what people think. Nah. Man. I think I think um I think it's dope that you keep it so real. You always been super transparent. <laughs> always um, been transparent. Cause you gotta keep it cause you gotta realize, right? I tell people, right? Man, this a rapper from, man, I ain't gonna say his name. It's a rapper. It's a, it's a rapper from LA that I wanted to do a song with. And, man, I know the nigga through another nigga. I was tied in with another nigga. And he was like, man, doing the song with him, well, that mess up my brand. And it's like, mess up your brand? You not even no street nigga for real. You don't know what a brick look like. You don't know how they come. You don't know how it smell when you crack it open. I'm one of the realest niggas in this industry that really live what I rapped about, that really know that's plugged in from Alaska to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? But 
the thing is, man, I wanted to come in this game on a different type of time. How I ended up in Houston, I had just beat a case. Like, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas that be, a lot of cats that be rapping, they be frauds. They never live that life. You know what I'm saying? They just good entertainers. And when I came in the game, everybody rapping is dope talk, brick talk, rob talk. Um, Jack Boy talking, never did none of that. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to, um, I sat back like, man, I'm going to come in shit. I'm going to get him. Having a job, mm. swimming trunks, no jewelry. I was new. I was a breath of fresh air. So it's like, I knew I was going to pop with that. But that also hurt me because a lot of niggas in the industry started acting weird towards. I'm like, bro. I'm like a kingpin to you, little dude. Like, yeah. for real. Like, not now, but my background, I'm like a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really was who you think you are, like, now yeah. as a rapper. Like, and it's like, man, you niggas, you rap niggas is so funny, man. Rap niggas is hilarious. So, did you, did you talk to Baby Smooth? Like, have a real conversation with him? And he he, gave you I hit drink? him. I hit him. He ain't hit back. But I seen, I, I clicked on one of his songs and they said, that shit was about Tone Car. I said, damn, this nigga Indy Indy. So you gotta realize, he got all them streams, he got a big fan base, and they streaming. The checks that's going to these labels, bro, for these other rappers, Baby Smooth getting them in his pocket yeah. every month. So you gotta think, bro. A mortgage for a nice house like my crib, three thousand square feet. Yeah, you gotta come to the new crib too. It's crazy. Mm. Shout out to real estate, man. Shout out to real estate. Um, a mortgage on a nice house, bro, is probably about three bands. Three to five. Three to five thousand. Yeah, it depends yeah. on your credit. Yeah, it depends. Okay, all right. So interest if, rates. Yeah. So if you're if you making thirty thousand a month. That's not hard to make on the streaming side, bro. Mm. Don't let these, man, don't let these people fool you, man. If you making 30000 a month, 20000 a month, even if you making 15000 a month on streaming, your average cost from your house, your car, your utilities for a nice, you say three to five, seven. Mm. So I say for the utilities, a car note. Average car note for like a nice car, probably about twelve hundred, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred. Depends on what you get. Two thousand. Mm. So let's just say all in, bro. You in like seven thousand, eight thousand. That's on a high end, bro. That's not no regular day to day life job living. We talking about rappers here, bro. Let's be honest. No jury, or if you want to go buy some jury, that's you, bro. But jury, you don't really need that, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying. Be authentic, my nigga. Yeah. It's nice. Go buy your girl some. I trick up on my girl. Go buy my girl a Chanel bag before I go buy me some jewelry. That's just me, though. Yeah. So let's just say all in, you bought 8000 Bro, you making 30000 a month. Bro, all you need to do is just pay your rent, pay your car note, pay your utilities, eat. It's probably about another band. You all in 9000 That's rapper time, bro. So nine thousand a month, you making thirty thousand, forty thousand from TuneCore, twenty thousand. What you doing with the other money? You gonna trick it off, or you gonna save it? Drugs. Most rappers drugs. Rappers, yo, I interview rappers, and you can go back and look, man. Rappers are spending around thirty thousand a month on weed. Thirty. A month. When I interviewed Ka Cash Air Kwan, yeah, he can't he can't eat until he smokes. You know people like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but it's just yeah. like it becomes a habit. Like it's a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say, man, to every artist out there, man, pay your bills, get you a house, bro. If you don't know how to get a house, bro, hit this nigga Sean. Yeah. He going to connect you to a beautiful young lady. Her name is Heaven. She's a beautiful, nice, young lady, man. She bought her cheek. She going to go hard with you. She got the plug. She going to get you the loan. She going to do your credit. She gonna, He got the credit, bro. He going to, you feel me? If you a rapper, bro, you don't got no guidance. If you don't got no good people around you, bro, 
man, just ask this nigga Sean for some guidance, bro. And if he don't hit you back, offer to pay the nigga. And he might not still hit you back. Keep hitting him. You know what I'm saying? Get you a house. That's the start of your wealth, bro. Because you can move every two years and turn that turn every house that you move from into a rental until you get 30 rentals. And then, my nigga, you got something to fall back on if rap ever fold for you. Because I was talking to Slim Thug, and bro, Slim Thug, I just be taking notes from him. And, man. man, the knowledge I got from him, Baby Smooth, from watching Baby Smooth, like, nah, I just, I, nah I'm just going to go hard with the rap mm. and just pay you for promotion. Probably hit academics. Academics don't mess with a nigga, but it's all I love. I pay the Why he don't mess with you? I don't know. I hit it. Maybe because I ain't big enough. A lot of niggas do that too. Oh, he ain't big enough. You know what I'm saying? But that's cool. I ain't taking nothing personal. I don't take it personal, bro. I don't take it personal. I promise you. I love you. Mwah. It's cool. I pay you for promotion. I do it through a third, I do it through a third person. But I'm just dropping, give you good videos, good content. You feel me? For my fans. And we just about to, we can partner up, bro, whatever. But I'd rather just, I'd rather just give you a percentage, bro. I don't even want no cheese. So I'll just give you a percentage. You ever thought about going back to the post office? Nope. Because realistically, realistically, right? If I drop a song and promote it good, bro, I could probably make 10000 just off that one song. The side, so the Sada Baby record, do you own that record? I own, so we, the way I did the deal was I did a five-year retention. A lot of niggas do seven. A lot of niggas do 20. A lot of niggas do 15. A lot of niggas never get their masters back. Right. They don't got a chance to license it. Me, I did... Get a five-year license, bro. That was in 2020. It's mm. 2025 next year. All that come back. Free Joe Exotic still making about 60000 a year. That one song. You know what I'm saying? Honey Pack making, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Honey Pack remix. Coil Ray song. You know what I'm saying? Then what I'm making now. Mm. It's just like... Man, all I need is... And then the music I got now... Man, I believe I got a hit on my hands. The features I got, the music I'm returning with, it's, it's about to be big. We about to go up, man. We about to go up, bro. Mm. We about to go up. This album, forgive me not, March 29th, we about to go big, bro. This is a great album. This is like no funny bars. I got, man, we, me and my fans been waiting. On this Rio, the young OG track. They been saying, man, we want you in Rio, bro. We want you in Rio, bro. You can rap. We want you in Rio, bro. We hear you with all these other Flint niggas. We want you in Rio, bro. So you know what I did? I went and go got Rio. He Wally in the pen. We did a song. We throwing it back up on the... um. We throwing it, we throwing it uh, on a tape featuring... Another big, big, major artist. I'm talking major. Who we've been begging. We get, we finally got a feature who we've been begging from. We've been begging for it for years. The fans even been pushing for it. My fans even been hitting this nigga. We got a fit. It's me, Rio, and then I threw the biggest nigga in the world on this song, me and Rio. But we cannot, we could not put it on um like the DSPs as a feature. Oh him. Oh my god. Yeah, we um we got one of the biggest features. We got one of the biggest niggas in the world. I can't say it right now. 
and we're gonna release it on the track list before, like a day before the album drop. But it's the biggest nigga in the world. This nigga probably got 80 million monthly listeners on Spotify. I can't say no names. People can already guess what it is. But this is the biggest nigga on earth. If this nigga breathe on a track, you out of here. You out of here. He made a lot of niggas take off in the rap game. We got him. And I didn't want to do it on a track with just me and him because that's selfish. I wanted to do it on I wanted to do it on a track with me and Rio. So it's me, Rio, and the biggest nigga in the world on there. And we're gonna release it on the track list the day before the album come out. Mm. But we ain't gonna be like on um Apple Music by Fire. We're just gonna give it up. Mm. Well, it's like a feature feature. Kind of like what um, Travis Scott did. Right. I remember one year he ain't had no features on yep. there. But when we listened to the album, he had features. And eventually he put features on you know, like a week later or two weeks later. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to go dig for it. Man. But I just gave it up because we on, we on Say Cheese. So even if something happened to me detrimental, I'm going to always go to you first before I go to anybody. Yeah. Give you the interview. You know what I'm saying? Give you the exclusive. But yeah, so it's really me, Rio, and him on track. And I can't wait for y'all to listen to it. I can't wait for the world to listen to it. It's about to be the biggest, biggest, biggest fucking song. Best album of 2024. Independent. Real independent. Not Empire. Not any type of distribution. Big distribution company give me a bag for it. No, I put my own money up. Mm. For this album, no, and really a lot of niggas flake too. A lot of niggas flake on the features, but I don't even take it personal. That just meant like, damn, Pack, you ain't big enough. Like who? Like, oh, uh, uh, man, my nigga Yachty, man, my nigga Yachty was like, um, we we had a song from 2021, and he was like, Pack. Bro, I don't even sound like that no more. He like, bro, you know, um, I don't sound like that no more. Man, that nigga sent me a message. I can't say what y'all said, but any other nigga would have heard that and felt like would have went hard on him. Like, would have tried to get mad at him. Yeah. Me, I took it as, you know what, Pac? Bitch, you ain't big. Bitch, you not that. Mm. You ain't him no more. Bitch, you ain't 2020 pack, man. You don't got it no more, bitch. Stick a fork in it. Mm. Them niggas don't think you got it no more, bro. Okay. Say no more. Yachty, I love you. I love you to death. Yachty, Yachty my nigga too. I fuck with Yachty super hard. Don't matter what. That was just that, bitch, you ain't big. You can't throw this out, bitch. I'm riding around. I got hit records. I'm writing hit records, bitch. I'm on. Bitch, Drake coming to get me to uh, executive produce his album. Who the fuck is you, Pac-Man? You ain't big enough to have a song on me. Mm. Bitch, go get, go, go, go get back on your grind, bitch. Then come. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Grown man shit. Yeah. So that's how I took it. Cause my man's was next to me, like, bro, I can't believe that nigga saying that shit. You know, that nigga shit. Yeah. That nigga shit. I'm like, bro, don't even think like that. This how we supposed to think about it. I told him, like, you gotta think, bro. Where have Pac-Man been? What have he been doing? Who the fuck is you to get a song with this new improved Yachty? You're not big enough. Go get it out the mud like you did before and get big again. Then I give you a feature. Mm. Uh so uh yeah, he like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? So, here I go. I'm about to get big again, Yachty. So, Yachty, when I call your phone, once you see me going up, I need you. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on in. I don't even take it personal, bro. You can't take nothing personal in this game. That just give you a sign. Nigga, you not big enough. Go get it out the mud. Yeah. That nigga, that nigga, uh, Vlad introduced the, uh, Vlad just did an interview with a nigga that played with Kobe. That nigga told that nigga, man, you ain't. Respectfully, that nigga said, bro, you can't talk to me. You don't got enough accolades. 
It's the truth. Mm. You got to go grind for it. You got to grind for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Speaking of grind, uh, I know a lot of y'all are sitting right here like, who the hell is this dude sitting next to Sean? Mm. I got the number two receiver in the state of Texas, and he's only 14 years old, Hayden. Um, you know, wonderful kid, super talented guy. Um, what's some advice you'll give Hayden? Through all the, the ups and downs you've been in in your life, you got somebody who um, can can go to the league. Man, look, bro. I can't give you no advice, bro. I'm not no basketball player. I'm going to be 100 with you. The only advice I can give you, bro, is be polite, gang. Be cool, laid back, don't do no drugs. Put on a condom. Mm. Um... And the only advice, and the only other advice I should give you is go watch Sebastian Telfair on Vlad, oh. on Vlad TV, bro. That's going to tell you everything you need to know. I watched a lot. Like, I watched his interviews. Not, you know, I'm tight with Miles Bridges. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, what he was just saying was just so much, bro, how he was moving around. Because he a New York nigga. New York niggas. Bro, if you ain't ever met no New York nigga, bro, then you wouldn't understand. Once you meet a New York nigga, you understand. They flashy. You know what I'm saying? They going to have the best drip. And he was just saying a lot, bro. Go watch Sebastian Telfair, Vlad TV interview, gang. I feel like every young, up-and-coming NBA. NFL. NFL, soccer, whoever athlete that's about to get millions should watch that fucking interview, dog. You know who Sebastian Telfair is? No. Yeah. Check him out. Yeah. Super talented dude. And don't take nothing personal, bro. Like, nothing is personal, bro. These niggas got to think, bro. Got to pay attention to the motherfuckers now. Them the people who love you. Them the people with your family. Mm. Them the people who respect you. Them the people who going to... Ride with you till the wheels fall off, bro. You gonna have people who look at you when you make it and say, "I love you, bro. You my brother. You my man's." And if you ever fall, they gonna flake on you, and that's cool, bro. Cause Sebastian, like Sebastian Telfair was saying, like nigga, when I went down, I like like Mason Cameron had asked the nigga, like, yeah, cause you gotta realize, bro, he was the hottest nigga in New York, New York. at one point, yeah. and. LeBron, Jay Z, mm. Stephon Marbury. Marbury is his cousin. Yeah. Like he was like the young. He was. Who the fuck was he? Was he? he was probably the, he was the best. He was number two in his class, I think. Right, what that nigga. Two? He been uh, he been getting checks from Nike and Adidas, I, I Adidas for some like for since months, he was like seven yeah. years old, bro. Yeah. Like so. Cameron and Mace gonna ask him a trick question, right? Like, yeah, man, can you call LeBron or Jay Z now? Mm-hmm. You feel me? He, he was like nah. being a little shit. <laughs> he, I saw what he did with that, <laughs> but he was like, no, look, like he understood and he understand from from what I seen. He understand and from what I seen, I don't know how he truly feel, but he was like, nah. He just asked the question, like, nah, because like. Nigga, you can't, like, you know what I'm saying? You can't take nothing personal, bro. Nobody don't owe you nothing. Just like I said, Yachty didn't didn't clear the feature. And he like, nigga, you feel what I'm saying? I don't get I ain't get mad. Any other rapper would have got mad, would have went on Vlad TV and went on his Instagram page, went on live, would have cussed Yachty out. Oh, man, I love Yachty to death. Mm. He gave me that. Pat, get back on your sh- you know what I'm saying? My nigga, my nigga who, man, my nigga who I've been rooting for, bro, since I first seen him. And I used to be telling all the Houston niggas, like, all the Houston niggas used to be, the me and my Houston niggas, so I, I rock with the whole Houston. And when I seen Big X the plug, right, mm. I first seen him, when I first seen him, this nigga, bro, this nigga had probably about 5,000, like, this nigga had like 5,000, like, Followers, bro. Mm. It's or probably like three thousand. When I first seen, you know, I'm fellow fat nigga to the death of me. So when I seen him, I'm like, I'm arguing. My man, man, this nigga gonna be the hardest nigga in Houston. My man, like nigga, D baby, the hardest nigga. He gonna be the best nigga. Man, and 
And I told them niggas, bro, he's the biggest nigga out of Texas right now. Mm. No cap. And I told them niggas, and we had did a song, um, and he ain't clear it either. Who? Big X. Damn. But like I told him, bro, you know, it's all good. I don't know if he about to put out an album or what, but he probably feel like, nigga, I'm, I'm super big now. Like, pack you not big enough. Go big. Mm. Get on your grind. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a uh, bro, the, I'm not 2020 Pac-Man no more. I know that. Watch me go get it out the mud again. Mm. Damn. I don't take it personal. Watch me go get it out the mud again. Give me two years, probably three, putting out a tape every quarter, videos, promotion. Watch me go get it out the mud again on the radar and rapping, going crazy. Watch me go get it out the mud again. My page got deleted, but watch me go get it out the mud again. And them niggas still my brothers. We're going to go link up two, two years from now and do songs. Like nothing ever happened. Cause I don't take it personal. I ain't that nigga no more. I I, ain't, I don't got that wave no more. Got a little wave, but they want the big wave. They want something that's gonna, you know how rappers think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, I remember you were doing a, a weight loss journey and then you like stopped, kinda. Yeah, I did, man. You know, it's hard, bro. It's super hard to do something. It's like, I I heard Jim Jones say, "Man, if you can't, if you what that nigga say, if you're not motivated, stay consistent. Consistency is the hardest thing on earth. Mm. It's the hardest thing, bro. That's something that nobody ever says." That's an underrated thing. Consistency is so hard, bro. Because you got to think, right? Especially when you don't feel like it or especially when you don't like it or especially when you're a lazy person. Bro, you got to think about it, bro. Even though you love say cheese, we know this your bread and butter. This how you eat. This your baby. This your bread. But there's some days you don't want to do it, bro. Mm. But you got to stay consistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know for a fact I can die any day from sleep apnea, heart attack. You feel me? I don't got diabetes, thank God, bro, because I'm like a big, healthy nigga. I, I juice a lot. I eat vegetables. You know what I'm saying? I don't smoke. I don't drink. You know what I'm saying? I don't eat pork. I'm fat really just off of portion control. Eat a lot of salmon, eat a lot of vegetables. I love rice. That's mm. another thing too. I love rice, bro. But um, consistency, bro. Consistency. Once I get, I need to. I need to. I need to. I need. I don't know what I need, bro. I just need to be consistent in the gym. Cause if I be consistent in the gym, I could lose it. Mm. I got the I got the right diet. I just need to cut like two, three things out. Now. You see what I'm saying? Cause I remember in the video in the apartments, you weren't you were big, but you weren't this size. Yeah, yeah. Like what was it? Depression or man? Nah, it was just bro, not moving around, bro. Laziness. I know I'm lazy. I'm a, I'm a truthful nigga. I know I'm lazy. For sure. It's just laziness, bro. Lazy. But that, that was a part of your brand, though, too. Like, I couldn't imagine a, a skinny yeah. BFB to pack, man. Yeah, but you got to realize, right? When it come down to getting money, I'm not lazy. When it come down to working out, I'm lazy. Hmm. I'll go do whatever for that money. Bro, you got to think about it, right? Go ask any of my peers that worked at James Griffith Post Office, any of the R, any of the rural regulars, they know me. 
They tell you, man, that nigga will be here from 6 o'clock in the morning to, to, to 12 at night. I'm there with the managers waiting on the, the, the Wilson name to come pick up the last piece of mail. Because, you know, that's how they do it. Right? I don't know if you know that, but every night, bro, the truck comes from the plant to pick up the mail at every um at every um at every uh 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 post office across mm. the world no mail no outgoing mail stay in there i'll be doing one one time i took the one time they had me driving the big truck like the big one that jada and wilson that nigga i was i was certified in that i did everything so that's what kept that weight. I was smaller. I was a fat, chubby nigga, but I went this because, bro, I would be up running day and day night, swimming trunks, shoes, white t-shirt, earpiece in my ear, packages, mail, whatever. And you got to think, bro, I did that seven days a week or six days a week. That's consistently moving with this eating habit. I would be skinny if I didn't have that eating habit. Now, what happens when you have an eating habit and you get money and stop moving? Mm -hmm. You get your size. Terrible. Terrible. Nigga, you in 100 degree weather, working, moving, all day, every day, six days a week. Anybody else alive would be that nigga size. I was just a fat chubby nigga. <laughs> For real, skinny. That nigga like a buck thirty. How much you weigh? Uh, I was one eighty two. Oh, his height. Cause that nigga's flat stomach. That nigga, yeah, that nigga got that nigga for real. That nigga skinny, man. I mean, do you want to lose weight, or is it just day by day? Some days you be like, man, you motivated. Then some days it's like, fuck it, I'm gonna be yeah. like ice cream Sunday. Yeah. Like I'm an actress, nigga, bro. I mean, push up, I can hit. How much can you hit? Yeah. You asking him or me? Both. How many push ups y'all think I can hit? You? Probably yeah. like 10. That's all? Yeah, at a time. Okay. I feel like 15. Okay. I ain't think a big nigga like me can hit 15 and 10. How many push ups you can do? I don't know, man. Y'all gave y'all gave me a lot of faith. Y'all gave me a lot of faith, though. A big nigga like me can hit ten or fifteen. What, what is your What is your girl like? Your parents say? Do they kind of motivate you? Like, yo, man, yeah, my girl be like, man, baby, you stop breathing in your sleep. You got sleep apnea. You need to go get that machine. Damn. You need to lose some weight. You need to, you know what I'm saying? That's scary. Oh, uh, for real. Cause any day I can not wake up. I but see, go you to say, sleep tonight and not wake you up said tomorrow. Earlier, you healthy. That's not you healthy, but in a sense you're not like right unhealthy for sure. But you told us earlier you was healthy. I am. You said you were healthy. I'm a healthy big nigga. I, I am. Sam in it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not doing no movement. I'm not doing no That's movement. That's excuses, bro. Every day you wake up, you can hit Planet Fitness for an hour. You can get a trainer. I know. I know. That's laziness. I told you I was lazy. <laughs> Trust me. I, I know my problem. You can't get money if you not healthy. Exactly. Doing all this just to die. Mm. I know this. I got to do better, bro. I'm no better than... I'm no better than... Look, and my daddy, right? My dad... Not... Not, cause that's my step pops, right? Mm -hmm. But my real blood father, right? Like I tell him, man, I'm no better than you, bro. I struggle with addiction. I'm addicted to food. I'm no better than you, bro. They putting fentanyl and crack. You can pass out. Cause I get on him about, you know what I'm saying? He keep asking me for stuff, but bro, I'm not about to give you nothing that you out here strung out, bro. You just gonna smoke my money up. Mm. But I'm no better than him. Cause he could take one hit and it'd be some fentanyl and then die. I can go to sleep any night, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and die. <laughs> so I'm no better than that nigga. Mm. I know my truth, man. And I'm gonna do better. That's, I just don't know when. That's solid. For real. I, I respect that. Um, 
Shit, we got a we got a game early in the morning. Um, For sure. Uh, before we get out of here, what's the what's what's the ideal route for artists these days? What's the business model? Um, find out what you really want to do, because this football, wherever, um, podcasting, um. Wherever you can get a big lump sum of money. Um, basketball, football, soccer, baseball, podcasting, um, talk shows. Use these platforms. Use your rapper status to go as big as possible so you can do what you want to do, bro. Because at the end of the day, bro might be 14. He might love basketball. Nigga, it's going to be tied at 35. He not going to want to do basketball by 28. Football, too. He's been football, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, football, he not going to want to do that by 28. He 14 now. His mindset is going to change. But it's something he going to, it's something that he want to do, that he been want to do since now. Like me. I always wanted to do upgrade houses. Mm. Uh, look, as soon as I walked in here, right, I'm seeing the imperfection in the walls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is my life now. Yeah. Like, I love rap. I'm seeing the imperfection in the walls. I'm seeing, you know what I'm saying, the stuff that the builders messed up, mm-hmm. the sloppy paint job. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, because <laughs> like, once I got some money, that's what I wanted to I wanted to live off my entrance. Like my next big bag, bro. Let, don't let me make 20 million. I'm living off the entrance and I'm doing real estate. Mm. And I'm still rapping. I'm rapping when I want to. But that's the American dream right there, living off the entrance. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't tell us too, man. When the labels like say for instance, right? Uh, people don't know this, but a hit record makes like $30 million. You see what I'm saying? The right here record makes 30 million. One song. That's why when Birdman be telling niggas, yeah, man, he was talking to somebody. He was like, man, all you need is one. One gonna pay for the other one. Because one real hit record makes 30 million dollars, bro. A lot of niggas don't know that. Because when they make the hit record, the artist probably only get two, three, four, five million. Or not even that. Probably like 500,000. Don't matter. You know, depending on what they, depending on the business. When they cut you that check, young man, he probably is never going to have a hit again. Once you go on tour, you stack up your money. If you make 20, 50 million, 30 million, 10 million, 5 million, invest in the S&P 500, it's going to grow. You live off the interest, bro. I mean, you live off the, the, uh, the, 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 the interest 5%. Right, if you invest five million into an S and P five hundred, it's gonna you gonna live off the five percent. Five percent of that is two fifty, right? Two fifty divided by twelve is like twenty thousand every mm. month, right? Back to what we's making on niggas is making off the rap. If the nigga making twenty thousand a month to live comfortably, are you gonna spend about eight nine thousand? Other than that, bro, sit back like a fat cat and stack the cheese. Mm-hmm. But that's how you live, bro. That's the, you feel me? Don't go buy no chain. Don't go trick off because you can burn through five million. Mm. Nigga, you can burn through that in a month, nigga. I want a coloring is so bad. A coloring is 500,000, 600,000. You feel what I'm saying? A nice house in Texas, bro, is 600, 700, 800,000, 900,000. You'll burn through five million fast, but if you invest and live off the five percent interest, nigga, in ten or twenty years, nigga, that'll jump to probably like forty thousand a month. You feel what I'm saying? But you go get you a, you, you live off the interest, get you twenty thousand every month. The bank gonna see that and say, yeah, we can get him a mortgage for five, for 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 five thousand a month. He's making twenty, of course. We about to get him a crib with six thousand square feet. Damn, you got a nice spot that you got. That's a portion of your money. Go get you a Toyota and go get you an exotic car that you're going to pay $2,500 a month for. And that's how you live your life. Mm. So that's the end goal, bro. Get in, make the money, 
live off the interest, or get in, go crazy, and do what you want to do, rather that's housing, acting, whatever, because you know, once you make it big, bro, they going to, like, you see Cardi in movies, you seen Will Smith go to, but once you make it, all the other doors going to open up. What you want to do? You want to go talk show? You see Cameron and Mace, yeah. these niggas, they getting more views than yeah. niggas on ESPN. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do what you, you get in this business and go hard so you can do what you really want to do later on. Would you ever sign another record deal? Knowing what you know now. This is why I say this, right? This is why I say I really don't want to. So, if people don't know, right? Record deals, distribution companies, it's some of the smartest shit. Some of the smartest stuff ever. Because all they do is giving you money just to lock you in. Mm. They give you money. Say for instance, right? Free Joe Exotic, right? Let's just say Roddy Rich, right? When we signed Roddy Rich, we gave you 400000 right? 400000 Man, you think I got to think about it, bro. We from the mud. 400 bands, nigga? My mama made 30000 a year. I'm about to get 400000 just to sign my master's away. Everything. Or I'm about to get a distribution company seven-year, 10-year retention. 400,000, bro. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go work. I'm going to go get them all this music. They got 10 years to collect this money. You gave me 400,000. You get a Roddy Rich song. Four year retention, 50 50 split. Bam. We get it the box. Right? The box was so big. The box probably made like 70 M's. I'm probably over exaggerating. It probably made like 40 though. Nah, you right. Probably about a cool 70. For real. <laughs> that, it was so big. Yeah. It played on the radio. Mailbox money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going dumb. That 400000 that they gave you to be in your business for 10 years or 50%. He signed to Atlantic. I don't, I don't think he owned his match. Let's just say a distribution. We not even gonna go uh, major because they want the masters. They own that, so he probably getting like fifteen percent. An average nigga get like fifty nowadays. Now, I gave you four hundred thousand. Now I just made thirty five million. Yeah, you made thirty five million too. But guess what? For the next ten years, I'm about to be in your pocket, my nigga. For the company, that's a up. For you, that's a up too. But for the company, I'm about to be I'm about to be collecting my fifty percent for the net. We just recouped in a year. <laughs> we just recouped in six uh six months. But for the next ten years, you my partner, bro. And a lot of artists don't even see their streaming money. A lot of artists don't even know. You know the label likes to add on shit to the budget. Oh, the expenses, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> my God, man, I appreciate you coming through, man. I gotta work on my weight too. That's you gotta work on your weight. Gotta work on my weight. How much you trying to you lose? You know why? When I see people, that's the first thing they say. Dang, boy, I thought you was moving away. I said, damn, I'm big as hell. <laughs> I'm like, man, I must have got huge for these niggas, bro. I look at myself like, man, I have to get huge, bro, because every time I meet somebody I haven't seen, that's the first it's thing they say. It's never too late, though. No, for sure, but I know like that's like the main thing, because they like, they you understand, like, damn. You got big. You got big, is this, bro. Is this the last time I seen you? It was You was on some super, like, losing weight, losing weight, losing weight, gym this, gym that, making videos bro, on reels. And then when I seen you today, I'm like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> yeah, that nigga got big, huh? Yeah, I know, bro. Gotta do better, man. I gotta do better, man. Me and V was on it, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to get the blame off me. <laughs> trying to get the fire off me. Yeah. Trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Man, lunch crew, man. Hey, man, go get Forget Me Not. You feel me? Got some big niggas on there. Got the biggest nigga on there. I think that's like track three featuring me and Rio, the young OG, and I threw, I threw the biggest nigga on and rap on there. It's, it's lovely. It's about to go up. We about to go up. Me and Sean about to lock back in and do something probably after this because I'm dropping every quarter. I'm back. Big, big pack lunch crew, yellow. <laughs> Man, I can't believe I had a haze on the energy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Peace.